Now, Juan, you can moderate this part. Well, Monica made a brief introduction, purposely, about the assessment of public policies that placed us before the decision of choosing and assessing the value and the merit of public policies in order to solve the needs of a population, of a territory, and it's very complex to make this assessment. We do this very often, so we thought, why don't we go through a lesson? We wanted to choose an anthem in our case to see if it was easy or not, we gave our reasons to choose a specific a song and they had to bring back memories for someone to choose a song as the best one, the music, the lyrics need to be or sad or happy or a transition towards happiness and it needs to invite me to feel peaceful, calm, to mention peace or make references to peace through the lyrics and it has to be about putting down boundaries, uniting peoples because it's an anthem for peace. It needs to make us think about a world without hunger, without borders. So when you had to choose a song, you had to think about what an anthem about peace should be like in order to represent global peace. In other songs, you mentioned that it, they were more about a desirable future. It's not only about what we recall through the song, but what it projects forward. That is a reason to choose one song or the other. The lyrics, it has to be realistic too. It needs to be about an achievable peace, invite us to dream to undertake projects, to meet promises, to talk about global peace, the collective communities, the composer, the person needs to represent the concept of peace, it needs to be coherent, meaning the lyrics, what it brings you back towards the ex lived experiences, what it projects about the future, whether the rhythm is future oriented, is it promising, is it realistic and you gave many reasons behind your choices. Some people mentioned that it made them think about diagnosis, that the three songs were valuable with regards to their musicality which is something that you were always assessing when choosing the song too but the lyrics were more important. It's about who's singing, the music and the lyrics and the combination of the three and what it makes you recall or whether it brings you back to an idea of universality or nature or peace globally. If we all think about the same idea when we listen to this song, it's a combination of criteria that individually you have been sharing and putting things in common to choose your song that could become an anthem. In one of the groups, Imagine was chosen and within the parameters that you put on the table, basically you established an order of songs and you were basically justifying your choices. In the case, in the case of some groups, it was about voting first, second, third. I don't know if all the groups chose the same songs. What was the first song, the best song according to the red group? Christina can tell you. There was a draw actually. It's true that there was a bit of a debate there between the first one, John Lennon's Imagine, and Bob Dylan's one. We were all clear that in the third place we wanted the remaining songs. So there was a draw between the two best songs. Yes. What about the yellow team? The yellow team had a draw too between Somewhere Over the Rainbow and Imagine by John Lennon. 
Maybe Marta or Jose Carlos can give you more information. I think that in the end they chose Imagine, but Marta, please provide us with more details. Yes, in the end, Juan Carlos made a speech that was amazing in favor of consensus, on behalf of consensus and peace. So I changed my vote and Imagine became the chosen song. It wasn't a dramatic victory. It was quite tight, though, but very interesting. Thank you guys. Very interesting. What about the green team? Rodrigo Velazco, who was working with us, will talk about that. Rodrigo, you have the floor. But we are the blue group, aren't we? We chose Imagine. Secondly, Bob Dylan's one. And the third song was Over the Rainbow. I, why imagine? Well, because of the history since its conception in this moment of political change worldwide. This song has for a long time been considered a peace anthem. Bob Dylan's song is more about human rights about the fight that was going on back then to fight for civil rights. That was, it was a time where the youth was trying to express their voices through music. Imagine, however, does talk about having no borders in our world, no religions, no states, to go towards the future together. Thank you, Cristina. Last group, who would like to take the floor to summarize the order of songs they chose? Antonio, maybe? First thing I must say is that I lost. Because the majority was wiser than me. We chose Imagine Then Bob Dylan's and the third one was the one I chose, which makes me think about my election. But yes, uh, Imagine talks about peace in a different way to the other songs. Peace can be an absence of conflict, but peace can also be a defense of rights, like Bob Dylan expresses, and collective dreams, like the last song, which was my favorite. In spite of all of this, I respect my colleague's choice because I love consensus. Yes, our debate was about the fact that Imagine was more about having t the need to dream, having the need to establish objectives. Bob Dylan's song, we perceived a bit more realistic. The information was there, the diagnosis was easy. You need to ask questions to act. We perceived these two points of view about peace from the most uh, realistic point of view. We're here, we're now, and the dreamlike traits of peace, the objectives we need to move forwards. Well, you didn't have much time and yet you were able to express your motivation and reasons behind the songs. We need a song to represent global peace. So you were able to reach an agreement and put the songs in order according to your preferences. This is an activity to reflect about assessment of participation because Monica has talked about assessment, but not about participation. Why don't we get into the participation aspect of the assessment? Should I share my presentation? Go for it. Yes.
Go on, Juan. You have the floor. Well, we were talking about assessment as a choice. Our definition of assessment is starting with questions about a public policy and search for answers. Who is making the questions, asking the questions, determines the participation process. You've looked for traits in a song in order to choose it and make it a priority, but public policy is different. It's not an anthem, it's not a song with music and lyrics. We don't know anything about who is singing the song, so we need to get to know these public policies. We need to understand, are they efficient? Are they relevant? Are they coherent? Are they effective? What are the qualities of public policies? And also, how do we incorporate the decision participation in assessment processes? Participation of who? When? When is that participation happening? When collecting information to provide answers? When formulating the questions? When the results of research are there in order to share them? How do we incorporate participation? By, by organizing consultations? Designing the process together? Letting them having letting them have that participatory impact, that decision-making power. And what do we want with participation? Do we want to strengthen capabilities? We want an improved, we want to improve together. What is our goal? And that's what we were wondering throughout the whole process. Monica, please, next slide. Whose participation do we want? Who is participating normally in assessments? Some colleagues had expertise. Normally, the people who participate are those with powers in the process, in the program, sorry, and who are in charge of the assessment. But what about the rest of stakeholders of the program being assessed? What about beneficiaries? What about the different groups that are so diverse in nature and that are not represented just by the word beneficiaries. We have civil society organizations, non-governmental organizations, participation of citizens through associations, academia, companies providing public services, or providing resources to provide us with assets. We've got civil servants from Treasury who co intervene in the program. If there are many stakeholders, how do we incorporate them in the p assessment process? Monica, next slide, please. Traditionally, the assessments counted on an assessment team with the expertise not and the knowledge their objective point of view from the outside and they would provide answers to the questions formulated by another team before. Normally, those in the body in charge of the assessment unit or program in participatory approaches. It's not about collecting information from the stakeholders. We understand that if we include participation, the assessment team needs to have a different layout, orientation and the development of the assessment needs to provide a role to all of these stakeholders. They need to be more than mere passive stakeholders. Next slide, please. So, what questions did we ask ourselves? Who, when, how, and with what goal? There's participation in all processes, but who, how, when, and what for? That's really made a difference. How do we incorporate participation in assessment processes? Well, next slide. If we want to include all the stakeholders that I mentioned, 
we see a very diverse participation beyond traditional stakeholders coming to assessment processes more than management units and the people in charge of the program because we like to say that assessment is very close-minded in order to answer certain questions according to indicators but it limits itself to these indicators and questions whatever is not a specific question defined at the start is not answered ever and these are normally the questions that interest or that involve the other stakeholders the least obvious ones how did we want them to participate well we want them to provide information to cooperate in management co-designing the assessment process well depending on the group they were able to participate in a different way look at this stare on the screen what about when when did they participate? When the questions were formulated, when we approached our citizens to find the answers, or once there was an assessment report and we wanted to go back to the people in charge of public policies to tell them, oh, these are the recommendations. We understood that participation had to be sustained throughout time. And it had to be impactful. These are the keys of participatory processes. It needs to be diverse, sustained and impactful and it needs to lead to a transformation and improvement of public policies and to develop the capabilities of all the involved stakeholders. Next slide please, Monica. This is the summary. Why do we do this? Well, because we firmly believe that it enhances assessment processes. We better understand needs. We never leave people behind. It gives legitimacy to processes and it helps people feel accountable for the assessment. And we get stakeholders more interested in the process, which leads to their later interest in building a concept of citizenship, improving cities. There's a collective advantage to making these processes participatory. This is what we did in Costa Rica and in Jalisco in two pilot experiences. Our colleagues will now be telling you about the experience they developed with the involved groups from public programs assessed in a participatory manner. Elena, thank you. I would like to tell you very briefly, since we are going a bit over time, I want to show you our participatory assessment route. We call this program 4 times 14 There are four stages, selecting, planning, doing and using, and each of these stages includes different steps. If you analyze this broadly, it could be the path to every process in public participation. But here, in public policy, sorry, but we are including here different stakeholders through techniques, analysis, it's a very informative process to analyze information, to get the participation, to collect information from the different stakeholders. In these four big stages, I would like to mention very briefly certain things we noticed in our experience in Jalisco. In the case of selecting, we had to think about feasibility, defining the groups, who's going to choose the intervention. And we carried out different workshops to select public intervention through different actors in Jalisco, citizens, assemblies, etc. And operators of programs and coordinations 
or cabinets as we call them here. Among the main things that we could share with you to sh choose an intervention, I would like to mention two things. Because we don't have much time, I cannot mention any other examples. First of all, my tip is to try to guarantee the continuity of the intervention. In our experience, we need the intervention that is going to be assessed to have decision makers and the secretary to establish a charter, an agreement to commit to, at least in the next one or two years, for the intervention not to change dr drastically or disappear, because if not, the work that has been done already is useless, it disappears. So this is very important. Secondly, what is the profile of our beneficiaries or users? Why is this relevant? Because at least in the first case, I it's not that this technique cannot cannot be used in cases where the human rights or social rights of peoples are vul uh, abused. But because it's about human rights, if you choose interventions that are related to a population who has suffered violations of human rights, there's a risk that the techniques, the tools used might not be the most appropriate ones. Let me give you a quick example. We chose an intervention related to women who have suffered violence. It's the ALICE strategy. They have suffered abuse, violence, and it was difficult to find information because they didn't want to share certain information in front of other stakeholders on the same table, around the same table. It's not that this methodology doesn't work for this kind of groups or populations, but it would have to change in terms of the dynamic, the methodology, and most tools used. For the case of, in the case of the planning stage, there are three main things. First of all, we need to stem from the fact that th this is a form, a training, somehow. We gather all the stakeholders, users and decision makers and assessors together, civil society organizations, academics, also. So their training their qualifications are so different. So we need to train those who have never participated in assessments before. We had to provide l dynamics to learn, to build capabilities, but also to pr convey that everybody's opinion is important. But yes, they need to learn what is an assessment, a participatory assessment, what are the main processes in this process, you always need to guarantee that things are comprehensive, horizontal, that every opinion is relevant. So we need to collect everybody's voice. We need to hear everyone because it's important that in the series of workshops where people say about what they want from the intervention, that they say what questions they want to ask, these questions will be analyzed and then some of them will become research questions. But people need to reflect, why am I participating? There needs to be a reflection of this participation. We need to look after the participants. We need to verify, for instance, if that person has the digital tools to participate, if they have the money to, to commute, if they are working, if their schedule allows them to participate, we need to look after them. We need to make sure that the participants in these groups have the possibility and the resources to meaningfully participate. And the other question that, the other matter that was very relevant in Jalisco, we hired an external assessor and we made them understand that they had a very different con different role sorry as to a traditional assessment here it, it's more about the assessor or the consultant providing guidance supporting 
for the others to carry out the assessment and making that person understand yes how differently this is to a traditional assessment because how the assessment happens depends on con the consensus of the stakeholders also the facilitator or consultant assessor has the main task of building trust and making the process as horizontal as possible throughout in the 10th point we carried out an analysis of recommendations so that was our 10th step and we analyzed one by one the results found by the research team and whether it was feasible if they had that power to transform people's lives if the recommendations were able to translate into an improvement for our society. In the last stage, the fourth one, the using part, it's just as important. The, uh, Dr. Monica made a very understandable analysis and an analogy. It's about adding ingredients, preparing, baking, the mise en place. But now I need to make you eat the dish because an assessment is aimed at improvement and in order to improve things one of the things that we want to point out is why don't we establish different means to communicate with those represented let's use videos or focus on the target group of our population design different types of communications to convey results for example we have images, videos, sometimes we have sign language videos because there are certain people with disabilities. These are five strategies and communications. The first one is called Mi Pasaje. This is a virtual kind of support to support 125,000 beneficiaries per year. You can find the details on the link below if you want more information. Then the Alice strategy to help and prevent violence against women. The victims are the beneficiaries. Be 25 municipalities benefit from this program every year. Jalisco Te Reconoce is a program to support the elders there are around 25,000 beneficiaries per year. It helps them in terms of their health. Then there's a 40,000 pesos support through the Apoyo a Grupo Vulnerables, Support a Vulnerable Group Program with 2,500 beneficiaries per year. Again, you've got the link down below and then Politica Mi Transporte Público, my public transport policy, is a strategy that wanted to guarantee the quality, safety, accessibility, opportunity and efficiency of public transport. There are around 2,000, sorry, 12.9 million beneficiaries per month. It's very important to mention that in the last s stage, our director was able to convey that we were allies, allies with the stakeholders involved in the process, with the beneficiaries, and that we're here in order to help, to support. And that is something that is easier if assessments are participatory, because it's a common assessment, a collective assessment. It doesn't belong to a very specific group of people. Instead, it reflects the interests of all of us. It, reduces conflict but it's as a facilitator difficult to manage you need to learn how to put common interests before individual interests that's it on my part thank you so much Elena I'm sorry because we're running out of time we're trying not to go over time Now we've got around 10 minutes left. Yes, let's give people time 
to make remarks, observations about the process. Do you have any questions, remarks, doubts? I have a question. There you go, Susanna. Your turn. Something that is not clear to me is the following thing. We've had a very interesting dynamic in our activity today, but I wanted to know, in these processes, are criteria established? Because when we were choosing songs, many factors can determine your choice. But depending on what the criteria are, you can choose a song or another. For instance, if I want to choose the song that makes me think of global peace, subjectively, I can choose one. But if I'm asked specifically about the lyrics or different criteria, I might have chosen a different song or I might be thinking about the historical context or the artist. So it's not about my personal taste, my personal recalling of peace and different topics. Are there objective criteria? in your processes? Are they established by the participants, by the body in charge of this participatory process? How does it happen? Juan, you have the floor. Just very quickly, criteria are defined by the questions what everybody, what all the stakeholders want to know. A public policy assessment starts with someone asking questions and looking for answers. If there's a very diverse and broad group of participants representing all stakeholders, we ask them, what do you want to know about the program in order to assess whether it is beneficial or not? Methodologically, we collected the questions that needed an answer. How? Live, with some meetings, sharing chocolate. They tasted different chocolates and they put them in order and then we looked at how to ask questions about assessments. At the end of the day, it's about them defining the questions that need to be answered through the assessment. And that's how we put these questions in order with a very similar dynamic. I remember the questions that used as assessment criteria about relevance, significance, coherence. Par in a participatory manner, we collected these questions. We went table by table. We divided them in efficiency, significance, etc. And this is processed in an administrative manner with Monica's team. In terms of reference document being drafted later, and this comes back to the group, and the group validates where their, their opinions are reflected in this document. So the establishing of criteria is just as participatory as everything else. Thank you so much, Juan. Luis, yes, I have a question that comes up because of the presentation. I think everything was really interesting. Time flew by anyway. My question was, in your experience, we're talking before about how we can assess results, we can assess impact, or assess the policies or processes themselves. What is your experience? when assessing different components, not only results and impacts, but also assessing the processes themselves. What have you actually assessed? What can you tell us about this? Thank you so much. Go on, you have the floor. Well, our experience has included all sorts of assessments and other typologies that are more typical in Mexico because legislation-wise we're able to do these. So then we'll be able to provide more information, but we basically think about how operators like to assess processes or coverage or satisfaction 
or quality because answers and information of this kind is related to their own processes and it helps them improve them. Normally, the political uh, directors, the top roles in institutions want impact assessments. Tell me, for each peso that I invested, what impact did we achieve? That's what they want to know. Or they want to focus on results. Users, instead, are interested in assess assessments of quality, satisfaction, results. The planning bodies, we love assessments of design so when there are different roles around the same table defining questions there's a combination of questions it's a bit of everything so in our experience in participatory assessment it's almost always a mixed assessment we focus on processes at the same time as we think about design results we assess impact etc but there's also another dynamic. Planning workshops include this dynamic, but it's one of the many that we use because planning workshops take around four days, full days from nine to four, and we work hand in hand because the participatory assessments are based on popular education principles. This means that little by little, we incorporate theoretical, very complex sometimes concepts, and we need to make people who have no expertise with them become familiar with them. Sometimes around the table, we have a PhD, an expert together with a person who works, I don't know, cleaning, buildings in a part of the city. So we're basically empowering everyone, combining expertise. As you were saying, Selene, it's about making the process horizontal. That's part of the dynamic. I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you so much. Do you have any other comment, remark, doubt? Sele, would you like to uh, make a f conclusion? I think what has been said so far has been very relevant. Participatory assessments are huge, are a monster, and there's a need for all participants to feel reflected in the final product. So we're talking about 10 research questions as opposed to the common two, three questions that we get in traditional processes. Managers think to think about users and relevance more. What is most important for participants is to know how the this process will impact their daily lives. Criteria need to be at the service of the assessment and not the other way around. Got a question. Since no one else has any questions, I would like to intervene for 30 seconds. Sometimes that comes up in workshops is the following point. You have a lot of experience in participatory processes. What would you tell entities who are thinking about making assessments more participatory. What's the first step to make these processes participatory? What are your tips? Juan, there you go. I'll give you a tip. Get started. It's about learning through experience. We, for instance, had a pilot project, political and institutional bodies need to lose that fear of losing control. It gives you some vertigo at the start, kind of, kind of a pit in the stomach because you're gonna leave your comfort zone. We had a short guide by our Costa Rican colleagues 
you can download it. In fact, I will now leave you the the link. Anyway, it was about the alignment. And from then onwards, we started and we basically overcame different obstacles around four questions. Who, how, when, for what? But yes, it was about solving and overcoming obstacles as they came up. It's about a desire to make processes participatory willingness. Yes, it's almost an activity that requires courage. You lose control completely on the results of this uh, assessment. It's not even an external consultant doing this assessment. For political people, it's an exercise of dele delegating, relying on others, and it takes a lot of courage, definitely. Go on, doctor. Yes, just to conclude, I wanted to mention that it's precisely this. It's about losing fear. There's a song called Déjate Caer. It's about giving up control of questions. I admire our team so much because Juan Mur Murciano, our colleagues, Juan, our colleagues from Costa Rica, our colleagues from the German Institute of Assessment with their initiative called Puzelac, who were with us in the first exercise because throughout the way we repair, we accommodate, we adjust, we adapt. So when we gave them the three definitions or three ideas about assessment, I loved the one by Hernando Licona saying that it is almost political. There are many tensions that need to be managed. Like in the plenary session when Juan Carlos and Marta were talking about giving your vote or not giving your vote, we saw operators in round table trying to convince users of why their question was the most sig significant one and this negotiation around the same table. But what yeah, the best questions were for the assessment. That was a huge part of the process. If there's nothing else, I would like to thank you. Especially, I'd like to thank my three colleagues because we've been supporting each other, encouraging each other. These workshops take at least four hours and there are two-hour sessions in two different days. We basically wanted to give you a taste of participatory processes. So yes, I would like to thank you on behalf of the Evalua team, Selene Michia in Jalisco, Juan, our partner in the past years. This chance that we had, we are open to having different meetings to provide more information. We are at the disposal of this network that we are part of. And to finish with, not to take more time, not to spend more time. If you have time, we have created a Jamboard. For those of you who've never used Jamboard, it's a virtual board. It's interactive. It's made by all the users. On the chat, you'll see the link. This is what you will see when you open, when you click on the link. This comes from a good practice of a participatory assessment community based in an Argentinian university referenced here evalparticipativa.es.net sorry we used this grid to hear your opinion please if you've got time create a post-it to provide us with your input you can make suggestions for instance here about what we need to keep doing 
after this exercise, what do you consider we need to keep doing? Things that we should stop doing here is that it's the second part of the grid. Then things that weren't done and that we should incorporate next time and things that work well but can be improved. And there are three levels. Things that are extremely important, things that we definitely need to do, definitely need to keep doing, things that are okay, important, but not that much, and things that would be convenient for us to do if we had time, but that, they're, but that aren't key. It's about sharing techniques, tools, that our colleagues and us have used throughout time. If you've got time, if you've got a minute to spare, please use this grid. You can move your post-its around the grid. We love Menti. It's very agile as a tool. Thank you for your recommendation. As we complete this grid from the participatory group coordination, we'd like to thank you. I have no words to thank you for this workshop because as Marta was saying at the beginning, it's an aspiration of ours that the entities that belong to the participatory group, basically a group of peers that you feel interested, involved, empowered when you want to share your experiences. So please contact us if you're here from other institutions. Feel free, as Jalisco has done, to come to us and say, please let us talk about this. Let us count, uh, tell our story and we can create more intense workshops or recordings so you can tell us your experience. Again, Thank you to the Jalisco team and thank you, Juan, of course. Your initiative has been amazing. I encourage the rest of the participatory group network members to do the same thing. Thank you so much. Thank you, all of you. I'm leaving our details on the chat. Juan, please, can you share your email? Marta, would you like to add anything on your side? No, you've said everything really well. I introduce you, conclude. Being on time is always a great thing. So thank you so much for sticking to time. Thank you. The Jamboard is open for you to make your input, regardless of whether we close this session. Thank you.